Listen, folks, the fact that someone asked me to talk about Kino's journey directly after I got a request from Mushishi, I, I couldn't ask for a more perfect scenario, because if you like Mushishi, there is no other anime that I'd recommend more than Kino's journey. Kino's Journey, The Beautiful World is a very, 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 very long light novel series. It has a 13 episode long anime adaptation that aired in 2003, which includes a few OVAs and also a movie, and there is also a completely alternate series of the same name that aired in 2017, with 12 episodes. The series from 2003 is super nostalgic for me and I love it very much, but I'm going to talk about both versions and try to be fair despite my bias. Kino's Journey centers around a young traveler named Kino, and they're talking Monorad Hermes, as they travel all around the world visiting all kinds of different countries, all packed to the brim with their own traditions, folklore, and cultures. Trained in marksmanship and survival skills, Kino plays the role of observer wherever they go, generally only getting involved when their hand is forced, as getting involved in a country's affairs tends to bring a lot more trouble than it's worth. No matter where they find themselves though, they always try to only stay for three days at most, in fear losing the desire to travel anymore. After all, traveling is what Kino loves to do more than anything else. Learning about new peoples and places, discovering cool things, all of that does nothing but intrigue our young protagonist. Kino is an endearing and charming baby, observant, diligent, and infinitely curious. But their primary focus in the story is to act as a lens for us as we get to experience these countries through their eyes. Also, I realized that I just glazed over the fact that their travel buddy is a talking motorcycle, but Hermes is the best. There's a cute running joke where he'll recite a saying wrong and he needs to be corrected like all's well that ends sale you mean all's well that ends well ah, yeah that my absolute favorite thing about Kano's journey is that when Kano and Aramis visit a country, the anime always handles info dumping in a very clever way. Instead of a narrator dropping facts or just watching Kino sit at a table and talk with a stranger for five minutes, when the characters are telling stories and folk tales about their countries, you get to watch visualizations of the tales as they speak. And some of these visualizations take on different art styles and color palettes. Some are full of vivid colors, some are more monochrome and eerie, and there's even this one time that a king brought in a whole puppet show just to explain his inner trauma. There's another reason why I like it that I could never verbalize when I was younger, but I think I can now. I like it because I love fairy tales, folk tales, and parables. Short form stories that tend to reflect a certain moral or theme. It's actually really difficult to write good ones, you know? I think they're impressive. I'm never bothered when a cartoon intended for children tries to fit in a moral or when an anime follows an overarching theme. I honestly adore that sort of thing. I like to feel like I'm learning something psychologically speaking when I watch stuff. It makes me feel smart. And if there is anything that Kino's journey is good at, it's making me feel smart. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's telling stories. I simply love how it goes about conveying different themes and morals throughout all the different countries' lore. From simple things to follow your dreams and never let anyone stop you, to more big brain things like stress isn't always a bad thing because if we never work at all, then we'll all become lazy and feel unfulfilled and depressed, which makes us even more stressed out. So if you'd rather be only mildly stressed out rather than majorly stressed out, then maybe consider doing something to stimulate your brain cells to deafen the self-deprecating thoughts flooding your mind on an everyday basis. Did I just read into it too much? Probably, but that's part of the fun. And if any of that sounds intriguing to you, I recommend it. But just to clarify, I never expect anyone to watch anything that I talk about on my channel. Please watch whatever anime you want. I'm just thankful that you're watching this video right now at all. Now on to the next one. Kino's Journey, The Beautiful World from 2017. Now here, Kino and Hermes are still great, and the other new characters that get introduced are fine too. They're all from the light novel series. They give more time to a side character named Shizu in this series, which I really appreciated, as I always wished that he had been in the first anime just a little bit longer. He and his talking doggo Riku are very, very valid. As while Kino travels for more of the thrill of it and never stays too long in a country, Shizu travels to find a new home to settle down in, which I think is a really clever parallel. There are a couple episodes that follow the traditional formula of the older anime, but this version centers less around the thematic implications of a country's lore and more about the travelers exploring it and their own personal character growth, which I'm not mad at. Like I said before, I really like both Kino and Shizu. On top of that, there's some cool new countries that the characters visit 
towards it as well. My problems with it are mostly little things. For example, I love the art style of the first series very, very much. One of the main reasons why I was so drawn to Kino's journey as a teenager was its more cartoonish art style. But the art style of the new one is nothing like the old one at all. It's so different. It, it makes me feel like how I felt jumping from watching Teen Titans to Young Justice and noticing that they show Robin's eyes. Because it's not wrong, but it feels wrong. Speaking of eyes, the character's eyes often kind of have this, um, dead look to them. I understand that Kino is often more stoic, and it's not that they don't smile or get frustrated ever. I actually genuinely like how Kino is portrayed in this version. They get some solid character building moments. It's just that I think that the acting and the character animation is quite a bit better in the original. I'm not at all trying to say that I don't think you should watch the new one or that it doesn't have value. I do still recommend it, but I recommend watching the first anime before the second. Even if you don't care for watching older anime, I would at least recommend the 2003's version of the Arena Country story. It starts around the midway point. I recommend it because they give Shizu's character introduction so much more time. They, it's just, you get more Shizu and Riku, you know? Like, what's the downside? It's a talk dog! But seriously though, one of the only stories that they reboot in the new series is the Arena Country. In the older anime, there's a whole group of travelers that Kino meets, and Kino gets to see them all interact with each other before fighting. Including Shizu, they meet outside of the tournament, unlike the new version where the first time you see Shizu is right in the arena. And th the gap between the rich and the poor in that country is barely even mentioned at all in the new one. Understanding all of these characters characters' perspectives only add on to the true impact of the ending. In the new one, though, they just cut to Kino in the arena, they fight in the arena a little bit, and then the ending happens without any of the build-up at all. I mean, come on, where's the where's the guy that looks like Senigata with a mustache? And don't even get me started on the assassin. Oh my god, that was one of my favorite scenes in the anime. J just look at the difference here. What is this? That's another thing, the action scenes are like night and day, I swear. I'm not- I'm so disappointed. <laughs> but you know what really bothers me above everything else about the new series? The first Kino's journey took chances and tried new things with its art style, cinematography, and soundtrack. There are things in Kino's journey that I have not seen done in any other anime. It is a very, very unique piece of animation. The version that came out in 2017, however, I feel like it chose to play it safe. I'm not saying that the new one is bad, nor will I say that it's a masterpiece. I just know that if you ask me to choose between one or the other, I would pick the first one again and again and again. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and remember my friends, you don't have to watch it, but if you do, be if you like it and I'll be you next time. Wait. Oh yeah, see if you like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!